Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Physical boundaries aren't logical boundaries. Okay, great. What does that mean and why does it matter? Well, it matters because they're often considered to be the same thing, and this can lead to unneeded complexity. An example of this are microservices. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So to illustrate this, let's say we have two different services. Each service in this case has its own database, and let's say these two services are coupled in some way. I'll get more to that in a minute. Now, if you were to ask most people, I think they would say that each service and database is its own logical and physical boundary. So this dotted line I, hear, I have here is to indicate that and that you're gonna to need to cross that network, that physical boundary in order to interact with another service. But in reality, you actually have different physical boundaries because your service likely has to communicate to your database over the network as well. So let's take this a step further and get closer to the real world where we have a web app or some spa that is the front end client that's interacting with our services. So we have this physical boundary from the browser to our API or HTTP API, which is our service. And as we mentioned also to the database. And if we were doing RPC, unfortunately, between services, we're also crossing that network, that physical boundary there as well. But most systems don't really look like that. Usually more often what they're looking like is we have a front end and back end. And that's the way most people think of it. So we have this front end, let's say it's a spa and is communicating with different services, or it could be an API gateway. Still, the fact remains, it's gonna look something similar to this. So if you're looking at this diagram and you're thinking that physical and logic boundaries are the same thing, you would think that there are probably three. There's the front end and the back end, and the back end is split into two different services. Okay, well, service, what the heck's a service? Well, for me, a service is the authority of a set of business capabilities. And then behind that, the ownership of data for those capabilities. Okay, so a business set of business capabilities, if we're looking back at this diagram, we see the data, that's the data that the service owns, the service is the capabilities, but what about the front end here? Why is it something separate? And that's where the confusion comes in because we're treating physical and logical as the exact same thing, and they're not. So what we're looking at here, is this a diagram from the four plus one architectural view model from Philip Crichton? And what it does is a way to provide a way of looking at a system in multiple concurrent views. In this video, what I'm really focusing on is the distinction between the logical view and the physical view, but I do want to make reference to the development view. So the logical view is, again, what I've defined as the set of business capabilities and the data ownership behind that. Logically, how we think of what that, what that is, what a service does. From a development point of view, this is where it gets interesting, is if you think about that same type of logical view and you have a Git repo that is that defines all the code for that service, and then you take all that code for that service and then physically deploy that to a process or a container, what you've decided to do is treat the logical view, the development view, and the physical view all as the same thing. So to think about this and look at this logically, what we're saying is get rid of all those other dotted lines that I had that were kind of referencing the physical aspect of it. When we want to think logically, we have these two independent services and logically they each have their own database, but they owe each own portion of the UI. Again, this is about the ownership of a set of business capabilities and the data. If you were to take that and kind of simplify this, think of it just as again, this is the one logical boundary of a service. It's the UI, it's a service, it's the data. Now you could take this and turn this into much different physical layout than uh, boundaries than what I was previously showing. So taking that logical aspect and converting that into something physical, now we can have just our spa and let's compose the UI from two different physical boundaries into one spa. But I could also take, instead of having two independent services be deployed separately to different containers, there's nothing stopping you from composing them and putting them into a single process or a single container. And the same thing goes down to our database layer or persistence. 
is that each database doesn't need to be a physical database instance. It's just about ownership of that schema. That means we could have a single database, but just each logical boundary owns its own schema. And that's the only the portion that inter it interacts with and that it owns. So the issue here is that if you're thinking of the physical and the logical as being the exact same thing, it really confines what you can do because you're gonna think of every service as being a physical constrained thing that gets deployed that's independent. But that's not really how it is. A logical boundary can have many different physical components to it. So as an example of a logical boundary within our system is let's say we have finance and it deals with receivables and payables, but we don't have full blown double entry accounting. Rather, we're reaching out and integrating with something like QuickBooks. The logical boundary here is QuickBooks and our finance within our own system. That is the logical boundary. Yes, they're different physical boundaries, but that's the logical boundary. So why can't a logical boundary be a physical boundary? What's the problem? Unneeded complexity usually. And that's because boundaries are hard to define. So when you're defining boundaries, logical boundaries on business capabilities, trying to figure out the data ownership behind those capabilities can be difficult. And if you get this wrong and you're only focusing on the physical aspect of this, that means that you need to reach out and cross a logical boundary to get data. And most people always ask about this because then they're trying to make some type of RPC call to another logical boundary. So if you're making RPC calls to other services, there's kind of two issues you need to deal with. The first is consistency, data consistency. If you're reaching out to another logical boundary to get data, the moment you get that data, it's gonna be completely inconsistent because you have no distributed transaction with your own boundary and the business logic and the action you're trying to provide. The second thing is just versioning and deployment because you're viewing these things as physical boundaries as well, is that you always have to deploy them generally hand in hand, in tandem so that they're no longer autonomous where you can just rev one independently, which was kind of the whole point of having independent deployment. Oftentimes what you'll see is because you make these changes and you're making RPC calls that you need to change both the actual service and anything calling that service as well, hand in hand. So hopefully you're using messaging and events rather than RPC, but this also has a problem of usually wanting to publish a lot of data and a lot of events for other boundaries because they need it. So it usually comes in the form of event carried state transfer, where you're publishing an event that represents kind of the, the state change or the entire entity that changed within a boundary, within a logical boundary. Other logical boundaries are consuming those because they want to keep a local cache. Now the problem is, is why do they need that data? If they needed a part of some business logic or some action that needs to occur, then I'd argue that you actually have logical boundaries wrong because that behavior should be a part of the boundary where that data is owned. Now, the other issue here is just what we often think of as eventual consistency that we're gonna publish an event and we're gonna pick it up right away and we can have that data stale for a little bit. Okay, sure, maybe that is, is fine. But what happens if it's just straight wrong? What happens if the data is inconsistent because a, the event isn't published correctly or we don't consume the event correctly. Now we just have bad data. It's not even that it's eventually consistent, it's just bad. And now you have a boundary that's performed some type of business logic capabilities and it's working on data that it do doesn't own and how does it know it's bad data? If we weren't thinking about the physical and the logical being the same thing, that means that that capability we wouldn't have to be worrying about RPC. We wouldn't have to be worrying about event carried state transfer. That particular piece of functionality wouldn't need to have a local cache because it's in some physical other service. It would just reach out to the database because it's in the appropriate logical boundary. Logical boundaries aren't physical boundaries. You can have a logical boundary that has many different physical boundaries. Just like I was illustrating with your actual service and it communicating with the database in a portion of the UI. Same thing with a physical boundary. It can be composed of a lot of logical boundaries. You can have a UI that's composed of all different logical boundaries that each logical boundary owns a piece of the UI. The same thing with your HTTP API and that your service that you're interacting with. That could be a single container or a single process that's composed of different packages that could be NPM packages or NuGet that's composed into a single thing that gets interacted with. Same thing with the database that could be composed on a single database instance with different schemas.
If you try to treat them as the same thing, you're likely into a world of trying to come up with technical solutions for problems that you don't necessarily need to have. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.